Okay, so in this video, we want to factor and simplify as much as possible the following difference of two terms. So as always, the first step is to factor out common factors between both terms. Well, we have a multiple of 6 in the first, 4 in the second. They share a common factor of 2. So we can factor 2 out. But if you factor 2 from a 6, you're left with a 3. And if you factor a 2 from a 4, you're left with 2. Then, well, there's an obvious factor of x cubed in both terms, so we can factor x cubed out. So if you take away x cubed in both cases from x cubed, you're left with nothing in this case. Then, well, there's a factor of x minus 1 in the first and second term. There are 8 factors of x minus 1 in the first, but only 6 in the second. So the best we can do is factor 6 times x minus 1. Therefore, factor x minus 1 to the 6. Well, if you factor x minus 1 to the 6 from x minus 1 to the 6, there's nothing left over. But here, there were 8 factors of x minus 1. We took away only 6 of them. That leaves us with two factors remaining. So we're left here with a factor of x minus 1 squared. What else? Well, there's also a factor of x plus 1. This factor appears five times in the first term, seven times in the second term. So the best we can do is factor five times the factor x plus 1. So this is x plus 1 to the 5. So we took it all here. This one is gone x plus 1 shows up here 7 times, we factored 5 of the factors out, so that leaves us with 2 factors of x plus 1, so an x plus 1 squared. And now if you look at what's left in the first term, 3 x minus 1 squared, and in the second, 2 x plus 1 squared, the remaining two terms no longer have any common factors. So, we can open up our bracket and write down the what's left of the expression. So we have 3 times x minus 1 squared minus 2 times x plus 1 squared. So this completes our first step. Now the difference of two terms that remains, both terms no longer have any common factor, so what we can do is multiply, expand both the x minus 1 and the x plus 1 squared, regroup constant terms together, multiples of x and x squared, then we'll have a quadratic polynomial and hopefully we can factor this quadratic a little bit more. So we have 2x cubed, x minus 1 to the 6, x plus 1 to the 5, times now if you square x minus 1, you get x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 2 times. And if you square x plus 1, you get x squared plus 2x plus 1. So let's look at the multiples of x squared first. We have 3x squared minus 2x squared, so we're left with a single x squared. Then the multiple of x, negative 3 times 2x, right, is negative 6x, negative 4x, so that's negative 10x, and the constant term, plus 3 minus 2 is plus 1. And now we have the leftover quadratic. Well, let's see if we can factor this by inspection. We're looking for two real numbers whose product is 1 and whose sum is negative 10. Hmm, this does not seem so obvious. And you can stare at this for a little while, but you will not be able to find two real numbers that have this property. Once again, whose product is 1 and whose sum is negative 10. So what we do now is we fall back on the quadratic formula. 
So the zeros of the quadratic, if you recall, are negative b. So negative negative 10 is plus 10, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, negative 10 squared is 100, minus 4ac. a is 1, c is 1, so it's minus 4, over 2a. a is 1, so over 2 times 1 over 2. So now we have the two zeros of the quadratic, so we can factor as this will be a real number. But before we plug this into the factorization of our quadratic, let's simplify this a little bit. And really, all we have to simplify is the square root of, well, 100 minus 4 is 96. Which means we have to factor 96. And, again, thinking of canceling the square root, we're trying to factor out of 96 perfect squares. So let me factor it here. So 96. Obvious factor is 2, 2 times 48. 80 plus 16, 96. Other obvious factor of 48 is 2 again, but 2 times 2 is 4. Times, if you factor 2, that's 24. And 24 is 4 times 6, but 4 times 4 is 4 squared, so we have 4 squared times 6 as our factorization of 96. And again, we factor this way because now we have a perfect square. In 6, there are no longer any perfect squares, so this will give us the best possible answer, which means the square root of 96 will be the root of this. The root will cancel the square, so it will be 4 times root of 6. And now we can simplify our expression here. So we have 10 plus or minus the root of 96, which is 4 root of 6 all over 2. And what's great is that 10 and 4 are both divisible by 2. So we can divide through. 10 over 2 is 5. Plus or minus 4 over 2 is 2. So 2 root 6. And now we have the two zeros of our quadratic so we can complete the factorization. So if you remember, when you have a quadratic and the leading coefficient is 1, the factorization is x minus the first root of the polynomial, the first 0. Let's take the plus here. So the first 0 is 5 plus 2 root of 6. So now we have our first factor. The second factor, of course, is x minus the second 0, the second root, taking now the negative sign. So 5 minus 2 root of 6. And now we have a complete factorization of the initial difference of terms. And that's it.